Hey everybody, Brian from Witch Doctor here. Welcome, thank you for tuning in. Uh, last video I had, I showed you how I got the Garmin here, the Zero C1 Pro, and uh, mentioned how I was going to do a test kind of to see how it relates to the lab radar. Well, we did that. We went out and shot uh, a, my 6 PPC rifle. I was breaking in a new show and barrel um I'm, i actually have two show and barrels on my six ppc right now for testing one has a tuner on it one doesn't uh interestingly enough i've shot the tuner one um and it seems to like lt32 uh with a charge around 27.4 27.5 and it turns out this barrel <laughs> the other one without the tuner pretty much likes the same thing um which is you know kind of expected because they are the same twist rate they are the same finish length same exact reamer uh chamber dimensions and whatnot so um but yeah that is interesting how <laughs> the data is lining up they both like the same thing um anyway so i did shoot a number of different charges and i measured um average velocity standard deviation extreme spread from both the garmin and the lab radar and these were for three shot groups. Okay. So I wasn't, I was doing very initial low development. I wasn't shooting five shot groups. I will next time, but this time it was very initial. So it was only three, um, shot groups in this test, but regardless found something very interesting about the lab radar and the Garmin, which I will go over right now. Okay. So let's take a look at the raw data. Um, this column here, is the lab radar's velocity readings for the 14 three shot groups that I shot. This is the lab radar standard deviation and the lab radar's extreme spread. This is the Garmin velocity, the Garmin standard deviation, and the Garmin extreme spread. Now, as I was shooting this, um, I was shooting it with a fellow Bentra shooter uh, who was interested in seeing if there's any difference in the Garmin and the lab radar. And uh, basically, so we were kind of looking at just about every number. So, you know, a shot would go off. We'd look at the difference, um, talk about it, and then we'd I'd shoot another one. And then we'd look at the difference, shoot another one, um, chat about any difference. And then at the end, uh, stop shooting, you know, with three shot groups and look carefully at the average velocity, standard deviation, and extreme spread. And we did this with most of these 14 three shot groups. And what we found was there were some instances where the standard deviation for the Garmin was significantly lower um, than the lab radar. And not just because of necessarily the lab radar having more variation on, on a velocity than the Garmin, um, sometimes the actual average velocity was almost identical but the standard deviations were quite different so for example if you take row 14 here uh, you see the lab radar velocity is 32.23 but the standard deviation is 7.9 and if you look at the garmin it's 32.26.6 which isn't that far off 3223 32.6 that's 3.6 <laughs> foot per second difference but the standard deviation is 1.8 versus 7.9 which is significantly lower and there were a few instances of this that we observed and we were a bit uh, perplexed by it uh, and we didn't really know exactly what was going on also take a look row 11 3352 um, was the velocity average velocity of the three shot group on the lab radar and then if you look 3353 was the average velocity so one foot per second difference but the standard deviation was 18.4 and um, for the lab radar and for the Garmin 14.6. Now we looked at each shot, you know, each shot velocity to see is there any difference? And um, there wasn't a whole lot of variance uh, in, in the actual um, individual shots uh, between the lab radar and the Garmin. So anyway, um, 
perplexing to say the least, but I went ahead and um, you know did a little bit of digging on the calculations here, and I actually found that um, even though the average velocity was basically not no no different, the the actually I did a statistical test on the actual velocity. The lab radar velocities for all the shots on average were 3266.5. The Garmin velocity for all the shots was 3269.7. So 3.2 feet per second difference. So not a huge difference at all. Statistically speaking, wasn't statistically significant. Um, so no big deal. Um, but when I looked at the standard deviation calculation, um, there is a difference in the way the standard deviation is calculated between the Garmin and the lab radar. Okay? Um, so there are a number of different ways to calculate standard deviation. I'll throw that out there first and foremost. Okay? So um, in, uh, let's say, biological sciences, pharmaceutical industry, psychiatry, uh, anytime, let's say, they're testing something uh, and they're drawing, let's say, a random sample from the population. We can't go out and sample 334 million people in the United States and have a complete sample, uh, a complete population, um, uh, you know, in terms of being able to study everybody. What you have to do uh, in, like, pharmaceutical study, medical studies is... Uh, draw a random sample of people. Um, and in that circumstance, the way that standard deviation is calculated is different than in a circumstance where you are able to actually have a full population. <clears throat> um, and in shooting, what we're doing here in the shooting sports, we have a full population. So when I go and I shoot a five-shot group, I'm not, <laughs> there's no way possible for me to, um, uh, this is just a random sampling of something. No, all five of my shots are recorded. All five of my shots are my population. Like this is all I shot. If I shot, you know, uh, 14 three-shot groups, all of that, that's my whole entire population there. Um, there's no sampling uh, from those, you know, uh, three shot groups. Each three shot group is a population. It's a complete uh, picture of what I have done. And so, um, what the Garmin does is it calculates the standard deviation based on a population, which is the correct way of doing it in the shooting sports and what we do here. The lab radar, interestingly, does not. It uses a uh, sample-based uh, calculation of standard deviation, which is not the actual correct way of doing it. So, um, so let's look at data from row 14. So if you remember, this is the one I pointed out here where uh, the lab radar's velocity was uh, 3223, standard deviation was 7.9, um, the Garmin was 3226.6 with a standard deviation of 1.8. Okay, pretty large difference in standard deviation there, right? So um, I, I looked at that. I looked at the three shots that the lab radar picked up. So shot number one was 3228, two was 3226, and three was 3213. So first of all, the average should be 3222.3. This uh, lab radar average rounded up from a 0.3. So I thought that was interesting, how it rounded up from a 0.3. Typically, if it's anything below 0.49999, it's rounded down, but it was rounded up in this case, which was interesting. I mean, not a huge deal, but um, anyway. And then if you calculated the actual standard deviation in the way that you're supposed to for the way that we shoot, it should be 6.65. Instead, it was 7.9. Now, I went and I got the equation for the most accepted sample standard deviation and calculated it, and it should be 8.14 instead of 7.9. So not only is the lab radar using a, a, a um, sample-based standard deviation, which it shouldn't be, 
there is no sample here. This is our entire population. Um, it's using a variant of one that um, is not kind of the most accepted equation. And I don't, I don't know exactly what equation that is. I frankly don't care. Uh, it's not a big deal, but it's, it's definitely not using uh, what would be the most accepted uh, population, uh, sorry, sample-based standard deviation. It's using some variant of it, which there must have been some rationale as to why. I, I don't know, uh, but um, it's definitely not using the one that I would use if I was using a sample-based, but the problem is, is this is not a sample-based way of uh, <laughs> method. This is a completely population-based, so you should be using the population SD. So with the Garmin, the three shot velocities were 322.7.4, 322.8.4, and 322.4.1, which averaged out to 322.6.6, which is exactly the value that the Garmin gave me. And when I calculated the population standard deviation, it was 1.8. So essentially, the Garmin is giving you not only the correct standard deviation, um, but also an extremely accurate <laughs> um, average velocity, uh, whereas the lab radar is giving you kind of a rounded up velocity uh, and the incorrect uh, standard deviation value. So all that to say, uh, let's say you're thinking, well, shoot, I use the lab radar all the time and I've been, you know, looking at the standard deviation and all this and really basing a lot of my load development on that, you know, um, and, and, you know, so, and it's been calculating it incorrectly. Well, here's the deal. It's been calculating it incorrectly the whole time. <laughs> so all the data that you have from the lab radar, at least, you know, you have a calculated standard deviation. Okay. And that, and that you can compare that to other, you know, standard deviations within the lab radar. So if I went and I did all of this load development only with the lab radar and decided that I wanted to use standard deviation, as long as I was looking at standard deviation from only the lab radar's data, um, that's fine because you get the same exact calculation with it. Um, I went and I calculated two other standard deviations from the lab radar and actually found the same thing that it's it's giving you the sample based uh, lab rate it's giving you a sample based standard deviation which is again not correct but um, you can at least compare all the standard deviations from within the lab radar data okay so that's okay but here's where you shouldn't be doing <laughs> is comparing lab radar standard deviations to Garmin um, that's where the, the equation is totally different. And so if you're uh, saying, well, you know, I'm going to load development some with the lab radar today, and then uh, next week I'll take my new Garmin out and continue load development, and you're using velocity, standard deviation, extreme spread um, to help you decide your load, um, that I do not advise doing because the lab radar is giving you a completely different equation for that standard deviation than the Garmin. I recommend just picking one over the other. Um, obviously, at this point in time, knowing what I know now about the Garmin and the fact that it's actually calculating the standard deviation in the correct way, um, I'll be moving uh, strictly to the Garmin now. Um, I'm just going to be using this from now on. Um, not only for this reason, I mean, the other reason is, I mean, look at it, it's <laughs> super compact. It was easy to just plop right on the bench, uh, and, and, uh, you know, use, um, super user friendly, picked up every single shot as well as the lab radar picked up every shot. So I have no, usually no problems with that. Sometimes it misses a shot here and there, but in this particular test, all shots were picked up by both of them, which is great. Gave me a, a perfect opportunity to compare the two. Um, <clears throat> so I'm gonna be using the Garmin and I'd say yes, one reason is it's giving you the actual correct equation for standard deviation. Um, it's obviously not biasing the average velocity in terms of rounding up when you shouldn't round up, which, you know, whatever, not a huge deal, one foot per second, no big deal. but. Uh, it's just odd that <laughs> it just is not calculating it uh, 
uh, correctly. So um, anyway, going to go with the Garmin now for, for that reason as well as others. Um, thanks for tuning in, everybody, and uh, hope you shoot small, and Happy New Year.